Now then, my next guest has had more hit records than anyone in the history of pop music. He's been in the charts for over a thousand weeks, and I'm sure he's going to do it once more. Will you please welcome Sir Cliff Richard? <laughs> Now you've been, I nearly said at it, you've been doing this for 40 years. It's hard, it's yeah. hard to believe you could have done anything for 40 years. How do you manage well, to stay looking so young, Cliff? Well, there must have been something in the air when we got started, because, I mean, how have you managed to stay looking so good? I, I didn't take a girl out till I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's chart the milestones of the 40 years, all right? All right. Because I've known you throughout that, on and off. I've Are we doing a series? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back, right at the beginning, to uh, the newspaper's first kind of crits of you. They said things like, a headline from the Daily Mirror, it said, Is this boy too, too sexy, sexy for television? television? Oh, you remember it? I do. You're joking. Yeah. I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> there was another one in the Daily Mail that said, Is he a bad influence uh, for your daughters? I know. What were you doing, Cliff? <laughs> Not a lot. I mean, I wasn't really a very good hip swiveller. I mean, these people are too young to remember. But I, I, I like prancing around a lot, but I could never quite get what, the El what Elvis did. But you used to practice. Did you do the wiggle in front of the mirror and do it like that? Well, I, it was all the, uh, the, uh -huh, the, the lip stuff we used to try in front of the mirror. And of course, the main thing about the mirror was, was having the hair plastered in broccoli cream or lard, whatever you could get your hands on, just to look like Elvis. You recorded a song. You recorded a song called Honky Tonk Angel. Yeah. And then uh, and then you stop singing it. What, why did you suddenly stop? Well, I'm not going to sing that anymore. I, I really, I sometimes think I'm really naive. In fact, we, all of us in our management team must have been naive at that time. You know, I, I had this record. I thought, what a fantastic song. I loved it by Conway Twitty. He had the original one on an album. We did it. We released it. It actually came into the charts, and I was about to sing it on, uh, on a TV talk show. And two nights before, I was doing something at a, at a Christian meeting. And I took questions from the floor. And this girl went, she said, why have you recorded a song about a prostitute? And I went, oh. <laughs> I, said, I don't think I have recorded a song about it. She said, oh, yes, you have. Honky tonk women, they're prostitutes. And I thought, oh, blimey. So I phoned my manager that night. He phoned Los Angeles. We've got friends in Los Angeles. He said, what is a honky tonk angel? Well, it's not a prostitute exactly, but it's a slightly loose lady, lady. of the night. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, you give it the over. Well, I thought this is too much hassle. You know, life is so short. And if it's going to upset a whole load of people, me singing this, I thought mm -hmm. I can live without it. OK, EMI hated me because the song was about to crack and I, I had to pull away from it. So, uh, you know, it was just one of those things. You give 10 percent. Thank you for saying this. Ten percent of your earnings to charity, right? Hmm. Um, is that something you sat down one day and said, "I want to do this"? Yeah, it, well, it did happen like that. But uh, I, I sort of read my Bible quite a lot, and I noticed that uh, there was this thing called tithing. The people of God tithed their earnings or what they grew. If they grew ten carrots, God got one. Um, and so I thought I should start doing that. And so, I, I, I mean, before, when I go on tour, for instance, before I ever see any of the money, 10% is already put into a charitable trust, which we run from the office, and therefore it goes out and hopefully helps somebody. It always amazes me that, you know, God, well, you know, God asked for 10%, and, the, you know, the government asked for 40. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird, isn't it? <laughs> You're very close to your fans, and, and, and some of them try to get uh, very close to you. <laughs> over, over the years, you've had the... Uh, sort of strange intrusions along the way? Well, there's been intrusions. There have been some funny people that, you know, put up the marriage bands and things. And, you know, I get... They put up the marriage bands? Well, they go to a church and say, I'm getting married to uh, somebody very famous. Oh, they said they're um, marrying you? Yeah. And then put up the bands. It wasn't in our parish. And the, the vic uh, after a little while, of course, the vicar realized that there was something wrong here and sorted it all out for me, fortunately. Um, and the, fun the funniest thing, though, because of my faith, that I've had a few strange encounters with people who... Uh, I don't know whether they're spiritually slightly disturbed. I don't know. It's hard to say what, whether this is true or not. But I know that once a girl came up to my home and, and I opened the door and I didn't know and she said, God has sent me to you. 
And it's the first time I've ever done anything quite so quick. I said, well, that's funny, you know, because he didn't tell me you were coming. <laughs> and, and she said, the, the nice thing was that she went, oh. And then she walked off, and I heard her mumbling, I got that wrong. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, so maybe she wasn't disturbed, just, just uh, misunderstood something that she thought Lovely God had said. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a couple of years since we spoke. Any further thoughts on cosmetic surgery? Because um, I, 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 I only ask because I wonder whether you've been nipped and tucked in the interim. <laughs> well, that sounds painful. Um, no, I haven't, but I, I, you know, I don't mind talking about it because I don't think there's anything wrong. If I, if I had a big walk coming up here, yeah. I'd have it sliced off immediately. Yeah. You know, and it, if everything's starting to drop, you know, get a winch and winch it back up again. I don't see, especially in our industry, when we're in fact being, we're public figures and so everyone's looking. So, I mean, I, I've got nothing against it. I mean, I remember saying to Gloria Honeyford once in an, in an interview about how I thought Cher has had so much done, or she said she has a lot done, and she does look fantastic. And I said, well, if, if I could look as good as she does, and then, of course, the next day in the paper, they had a picture of her body with my head on top. <laughs> that was, that was no, 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 it wasn't quite what I was after, really. Are you, uh, are would, you, you would you have it done, though? Well, no, don't you start. Dolly Parton started on me. Oh, really? Well, have Dolly, you had it done? Pardon? No, of course I haven't had anything oh. done. No, I was going to say, because if you had, you should get your money back. <laughs> Let me good. ask you something. Um, uh, if I win, I'd go to... They've got a sale on. There's a place downtown called <laughs> Tux or Us. <laughs> There's a sale in there with a liposuction, 29p a pound. <laughs> Cliff, have you, have you never done anything that you regretted, anything wild? I mean, you, you know, you lived this very straight life, and that's your choice, but was well, there anywhere along the way that you thought, oh, I shouldn't have done that? Um, no, no, I mean, I don't have anything to regret, really. None of us are actually perfect and squeaky clean, even though the, the media try to make out that I am. I've spent quite a lot of my time saying to people, please, you can't believe this about me. We're all exactly in the same boat. But I mean, I've tried really hard not to show the parts of my life that I'm not that pleased with. I think mm. life is so full of tragedy and need that really the best thing we can do, particularly people in the public eye, is actually share the triumphs. You know, when I haven't hit somebody, some interviewers. You've never hit anyone else? No, I haven't, but that's the triumph. I've <laughs> wanted to. Oh, is it? Control, <laughs> Oh, I've wanted to. And sometimes I really wish I swore. <laughs> you know, you get asked the most impertinent things by people who are half your age and you think, <laughs> <laughs> And then you think, well, um, and then you think it's an answer or something, and then they trash you in the press afterwards. So I can't say, well, no, nothing I want to talk about anyway. Yeah. Your, your religion <clears throat> remains central to your life, always has done. And you recently set up a campaign that aims to double the attendance in church by the year 2000. How are you going to do that? With great difficulty, I think. <laughs> I mean, I think it's always good to have aims. I've always felt that it's really good to aim high. If you miss, at least you, you, you get higher than you would have if you aim here. Um, but it, I didn't start the thing, it was a campaign that was beginning and they asked me to help support it. I, I was in the West Indies, and, and I, it sounds silly, but years ago with Lonnie Donegan, he did a sing, similar thing. In the local church, we, he brought music in, and, and that church was full every Sunday for six weeks. Is Just, that going to be part of this, maybe? Yeah, it is, but that's already happening now. I've been to loads of churches which are jammed. If you're not there by six, you sit down on the floor. You can't get it. There's lots of those. <laughs> and therefore, yes, there is the need. What this campaign is hopefully going to do is to inspire some of the churches that are just missing the mark to say you can do this. The Christian Fellowship held a poll for the most popular Christian. And you, and you came second to Jesus, right? <laughs> and where did the Pope come? It was, well, I, well Nine. Yeah, I know, but he hasn't had a record recently, has he? <laughs> 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 Did the result of that make you smile, or did you think, no, I'm, you know, take even a greater sense of responsibility in this? You have to smile, because it's not possible that anyone can take a poll like that seriously. Yeah. Well, thanks, Cliff. Um, I won't say another 40 years, but as long as you want to keep doing it, they're going to be out there buying the records and turning up, that's for sure. Look at them. You're going to do the single for us now? Yes, of course I will. That's the single for us. It's, uh, it's called Can't Keep This Feeling In. Can't Keep This Feeling In. Cliff Richard, ladies and gentlemen. Cliff Richard. Thank you very much, Cliff. Cliff Richard. Cliff with a single from the album. This one is called Can't Keep This Feeling In. Cliff Richard. <laughs> Ah, 
Cliff! Cannon! Cliff! Richard! Yet another hit! Good night, everybody! Des O'Connor tonight, next week, Lennox Lewis and Tom Jones.